Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I thank God for this day, as always. I know that uh, we are here to give God glory. Um, I, you know, I'm going to take my time for a second here. You know, I don't know if you get a chance to really just spend a little time with God on a daily basis. But if you do, your day will go so much smoother. Uh, sometimes I know through the hustle and bustle and we're running around and oftentimes we don't think about the fact that if we start our day giving God glory, the one who created this day for us, the one that created us to give him glory, if we actually spend the time thinking about that, it will make sense. But if you don't do that, if you don't spend that time, if you don't think about the fact that, you know, maybe we should give God glory first, spend, do that and watch how it goes. As you start giving God glory, and I'm, you know, in the morning, first thing this morning, first thing in your morning, it really sets your tone. Good morning, bro. It really sets your tone for the rest of your day. And it's a blessing when God finally got me to start doing that, how I began to relax. How it put me in a mindset that, God, you are in total control. As a matter of fact, it gives me the mindset that my day is going to be great. Because what happens is, as I spend time with God, God reminds me of who I am in Him and how He's already ordered my day, ordered my, my life, and orchestrated everything about what's going on. And so that gives me an inner peace that I'm connected to the most powerful being ever. It gives me an inner peace knowing that um, God is watching over me. He has angels in charge over me. Um, and that He, if I listen to the Holy Spirit, I won't walk outside of what He's designed for me to do. And so all of that gives me an inner peace as I start my day so that um, I'm able to just enjoy the goodness of the Lord, enjoy my day, enjoy the journey. And so I'm not going to sit here and paint a picture as if I never get frustrated because that would be a lie. I do. Uh, but there are oftentimes, hallelujah, that I'm not frustrated as long as I used to be. Um, I'm able to, after a point of time, I'm able to get back into, God, you got this. And so oftentimes you hear me send you reminders of things <laughs> only because... I knew how long, I know how long it has taken me to get to the point of where I'm able to walk out these things. I don't teach things, I don't give God give things out that I have not been able to relate to. Um, a lot of these things God has brought me through and I went through kicking and screaming and fussing and even cussing. Um, but then God began to show me what it was I was going through, and this allowed me to rely more on his peace. And so now oftentimes I'm able to go through things, and even though it may be somewhat a, a struggle, um, I'm able to go through it much better. And so you'll hear me often send reminders out, because as I said, I know how long it took me to get them, um, how long it took me to start walking it out. And so I promise you that if we we'll walk out this thing that God has designed for us, his word, his instructions, they will be a blessing in our life. Um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. You know, God's word and I'm going to say God's thought process is so far from the world's God, uh, thought process. And it's like that on purpose because God's way, of course, was the original way. God's way is the true way, but we're bombarded, as you often hear me say, we're bombarded with the world's way of doing things, and they make it look so beautiful, and oftentimes we'll make a decision that we'll put God later on in life when things settle down and I get what I want, and oftentimes that never happens, and that's a design by the devil. So, anyway, God gave me a word, and it is a short word. I mean, I'm telling you, I was up for a while studying on this one, but this is what God gave me. And so uh, look at um, the book of Ecclesiastes. It is in the Old Testament. The Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, verse 20. And it talks about a just man. And before we get into this word, which I said is a very short word, it's only one verse, verse 20. I want us to go into prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. For you being our creator, our God, our love, our everything. 
Thank you, Jesus, for just allowing us to understand you, the Trinity, understand your purpose. Thank you that you chose us to be one with you, to be to fellowship with you. Thank you that you have made us important in your eyesight. Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for your spirit, your everything, you, you, you being everything. Thank you for having your spirit inside of us. So, Father, that we will not walk in lack. God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for just being there to intercede for us. Thank you for, for being the bridge. Thank you for, for covering us. Mm. I thank you for covering us. Without your covering, we'll be exposed. Exposed and seen by God as the sinful actions, the sinful man. But because of you and our acceptance of you, we're covered. So thank you, beyond thank you, beyond thank you, beyond thank you for what you're doing, what you have done for us, and what you have always promised, already promised that you will do for us. Thank you. And Lord, right now I'm asking that you will feed us your word. You've given me one verse, and it's a vague verse, but I know that you got something that you want to bring out. So Lord, I'm asking that you will have your way at this moment. Teach us what you entitle for us to understand this morning. Let us digest it, receive it, and walk it out to give you glory in our lifestyle. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. By now, hopefully you have found Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the 20th verse. One verse, it says, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. I know that verse right there alone kind of hits you. But there's something that God is trying to get out. Because oftentimes the devil is constantly trying to condemn us. And the word of God says that there's therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And this is a reminder. Now, I promise you, let me tell you a personal testimony. I have struggled. I got to speak this thing in faith, right? I struggled with this for many, 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 many years. Because, and, and, and I said I had to speak it in faith because there are times even today. Well, there's times even up to yesterday because the day had, ain't many hours been here yet. Uh, that I struggled with this. And so, this is Solomon. And if you remember Solomon, Solomon's David's son. Uh, and Solomon, when God gave him the opportunity to forgive him anything that he wanted to ask for, Solomon asked for godly wisdom. And so you're hearing the wisdom of God come out in this verse. And I'm going to reread it again. It says, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. So now hear this. The devil comes to tell you, you missed the mark, you're going to hell. How dare you, child of God, sin? But I want you to understand something. God knew. That even though we love him with our whole heart to the best of our ability, we will still miss the mark. And he knew this. That's why Jesus had to come. That is why Jesus came for us. That's what the intercessory thing, the intercession, in, uh, that's what that is about. He's taken up for us. Because, see, the devil wants us to make us think that we blew it. So why keep fighting? But the thing about it is... When you understand that a loving father, when you as a daddy or a mother look at your children, not one time are you expecting them to be perfect. But your love never walks away from them. You will love them in the middle of their most craziest times in their life. You're not going to leave them. You might have to give them a little bit of tough love because that's what God does to us. But you ain't, your heart has never left them. And so God is just saying, well, him being daddy, him being father, matter of fact, his word says he's the only one that should be called father. But him being the father knew each time we would bomb. But Jesus is right there saying, and understand this, 
I was listening to an old, uh, old video that God had gave me. That matter of fact, I just finished editing. God is so awesome. Because as I was praying, God gave me something. That we know that the word of God was wrapped in flesh and put amongst us. That's Jesus. So God's word is him. God's word is Jesus. God's word is him. And so when you hear this and you receive this word, you understanding. That there is no, uh, there is no, no space, no barrier in between God and His Word. There is no time for it to be watered down. It's that God's Word is Him. He's speaking it. And so when you understand that and you see a passage like verse 20 in the seventh chapter of Ecclesiastes that said that all men fall. Understand that what you're dealing with. It's just like any other just, justified, just as if you've never sinned. Being covered under the blood of Jesus, you being, you're, you're acting out just like every other just man and woman of God. So when the devil comes to condemn you, no, the conviction is just like you do your child. You said, now baby, you know better. That's the conviction. And so when you and I bomb, we feel a conviction that we messed up, that we've bombed, that we're, we've, we've, we've stepped outside of what God wanted us to do. And you feel a sorrowful feeling. That's what we're supposed to feel. And so, but guess what? That sorrowful feeling does not separate us from the love of God. It does not mean that at this moment we've been kicked out of the body of Christ. It means that you should repent and come back to him and then allow him to mature us in that area. And so, and I'm telling you, this is, I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and go over this over and over and over again. When the Holy Spirit cuts out, I cut out. If it's two minutes, it's two minutes. If it's 35 minutes, it's 35 minutes. So I'm not going to repeat myself. But what I am going to say, that that is our, uh, that is our most precious gift as a child of God, to know that when we fall, that we have the opportunity. We're not kicked out of the body of Christ, but we have the opportunity to get up as fast as possible and repent and know that we're still loved by God. We still love. We're still His child. Yes, repent. The repentance is just like when the child says, Daddy, I'm sorry. I don't want to do that no more. I messed up. I don't know why I did it. I messed up. You've heard your children say that. Well, we're the same. I still love my kids when they bomb. God still loves us when we're bomb. The reason being, they're my kids. The reason being, we're his kids. <laughs> we look just like him because of the blood of Jesus. When he sees us, he sees the, the blood of his firstborn. We look like his firstborn. We look like our big brother. So when he looks at us, he sees his firstborn. He sees the blood of his firstborn. He sees a reflection of himself, the Holy Spirit. So just like you forgiving your child and saying, baby, it's okay, come here, come here, come here. We got this, we're going to do this together. That's our father. That's our father. That comes against everything the devil tells you about yourself. He's a liar. You can believe everything opposite of what the devil tells you. If he's talking to you and you're listening, believe the opposite. That's how you know he's lying. Don't sit here and let, don't sit here and let the devil talk to you all day long. Don't do it. If somebody in the, in the flesh, in the natural, was sitting here talking to you and aggravating you, you're going to get away from him. Or you're going to tell him to leave you alone. So don't sit here and let the devil talk to you all day long. And remember, whatever else, whatever he has spoken to you, it's a lie. It's a lie. God knew we were born. That's why Jesus is here. That's why the Holy Spirit is here. That is why. Because he knew these are things that you and I would go through. But he allows us to go through. Why? To make us stronger. Because when the conviction comes, you try that much harder. 
when the conviction comes, you understand that, man, I just can't deal with that. That ain't the show I need to listen to. That ain't the music I need to listen to. That's not the group of friends I need to hang with. You'll come up with that conclusion because you want to honor our father. You want to honor them. Just like our children say, man, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't really see what's wrong with them, but I know when I'm around them, I act different and I don't like the way I act. So that means I can't be around them. That's the same concept. The reason why we walk it out to please our father is because we just want to honor him. We want to honor him with everything that we are. And so looking back at verse 20, when it says, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin, understand that you and I can look to fall from time to time. But it doesn't mean we got to stay there. And it definitely doesn't mean we've been kicked out of the body of Christ. It just means that we need to get up as fast as possible. Ask God to forgive us. And move forward, not giving time to the devil to talk to us, but moving forward, knowing we're still loved by God. We're still in the body. He still loves us. He still has great purpose for us. He's still going to walk it out in us. He still has the steps of a righteous man as ordered by God. He still has blessings ahead of us. He still wants us to enjoy his presence. He still wants us to enjoy his goodness. He's still going to bless our going and our coming. He's still going to provide for us day and night. He's still going to protect us while we sleep. All these things he's still going to do. Because he loves us. I want y'all to meditate on this word. What do I mean? Ponder it. What do I mean? Think on it. Just let it roll around and around and then just give examples to yourself. Allow God to show you all of this as he gives you the scripture and you meditate on it. Because he wants to take you deeper in this verse. And this is a major tool that you and I will use to fight the devil every time. God still loves me. He knew it. He knew I would fall, but he's right there loving on me. He gave me Jesus. Listen, he gave, make it personal. He gave me Jesus to make sure that I make it back to him. Let us go into prayer. Father, I thank you for this word. Let it encourage your children. Let it encourage us so that we will stay kingdom minded. We can stay elevated. In your presence. And Lord I thank you. Allow this word to give us joy. All down on the inside. I'm covered. God I thank you. We're covered. We're covered. We're covered. Thank you for this Lord. For what is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. I love y'all. Watch this again if you just tune it in. It's going to bless you. And let it stay with you for the rest of your life. I love y'all. God's will. I will be with you all on Tuesday. Have an awesome day.